free. Introduction University is from Cambridge University. It's a university textbook from England. I probably have all sorts of issues discussing. So, so mm, in my recent retreat in Budapest in Hungary, one lady, uh, after maybe six or seven days of meditation, she realized all her life what she was doing was to fit in. Her father was um, an ambassador. So every three years they move. Okay? You are posted to different station every three years. You come back home three years, you are posted to a different country the next three years. From the age of three to the age of nineteen, she has to move school every two years. She has to leave behind her friends and then go to a different school in a different country, in a totally different culture. So, in order to be accepted in the school, not to be singled out, not to not to look different, okay. She tried to fit in. And that has become her habit. So all her life, she never knew herself. Trying to fit in means you try to be perfect in other people's minds. To be a good girl, to be a good this, good that. Okay? You try to do that. Meaning, you are trying to be perfect. So, one, the first sentence that she told me during the interview on day seven was, I'm very relieved today. Okay. Um, what's your experience? Okay. I have been practicing this. this I'm, t- I'm referring to what we have been practicing, what we have practiced. Um, in the monastery during this weekend. Mindfulness, compassion, and joyful feeling, this three things. And ask her to look back at her life as fun as she could remember from her childhood to the present. And she saw herself only trying to fit in. Unable to really enjoy her and what she, she is. So the first sentence she was told, I'm very relieved, I don't need to be perfect. She said that. Put unnecessary pressure on yourself. I'm trying to be a perfect man in the eyes of the people. Then I create a lot of pressure. A perfect meditator, I create a lot of pressure. A perfect meditator, you are not allowed to smile. You are not allowed to to fall asleep when you you know when you meditate. You are not allowed to you are not allowed to actually move your posture during the sitting to be so called perfect meditation meditative. See, I just need to be kind to compassionate to my body. Aging, my decay Okay, I just need to be aware of the limitation, and then I'm at peace and progress. Um, if the teaching you have been getting so far. By Buddhism is from the Burmese meeting. And the Saros speak with the, um, the Burmese culture in mind. There will be some part of it that you can't relate. Um, in, okay, what about? Asking me questions, what about questioning 
by by interpretation. Mm. Is it okay? But in Burma, they wouldn't do this. Mm. Okay. But when you actually read the Buddhist lectures in the original text, you're going to see a lot of dialogue. Most of the Buddhist lectures are dialogue. Meaning it's not one way system at all. The Buddha encouraged discussion. Just for, you don't have to remember this, just for the sake of, um, you know, here this is the Dhammata Kisa discussion on, on the truth, on the practice, on how to enhance our welfare and well being. Like this. So, um, you have to find your own Buddhism. Okay. We learn from teachers, from different teachers, we have to be open minded, learn from different teachers. don't use the word happiness so much because when we are after happiness sometimes we, we get lost we become driven we think happiness is a price this is something that we have to have and very often people interpret happiness as excitement so with excitement they can't actually understand what happiness is so, from Buddhist point of view, we talk more about inner peace. If, if you have inner peace, actually, you can be um, confident as about what you're doing. It's okay that other people have that opinion, but, but that's their problem, it's not your problem. You don't really need to make it your problem. Um, um, just um, for your information, you know that you have gone through this uh, um, terrible accident. Uh, it's likely that you're now recovering. I'd like to tell you how the brain can heal itself. I want you to uh, so read this book. It's a very easy book by Columbia, you know, by somebody from Columbia University. This is about mindfulness and neurology. The title of the book is called The Brain That Heals Itself. The Brain That Heals Itself. Okay. Michael Dodd is the name of that, consult, that uh, psychiatrist. He's a psychiatrist who also ventured into clinical psychology and my Buddhist mindfulness. The brain that can heal itself. That means uh, proper meditation may be 
six minutes, eight minutes a day. Learning how to recognize your stress signal and also the trigger. Okay, learning how to 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 work with them. This is quite inherent. Perhaps you know you will become one of the best neurologists if you're interested. So uh, this is one of the things that you can you can you can read and, and, and do. I'm not talking about meditation in the hard way. Get up three thirty in the morning, go to bed at nine thirty or maybe ten, and the whole day okay, just sit and walk mindfully. I'm not suggesting that you do this. What I'm suggesting is you know, a kind of you can Google like um, uh, you can just you can you can find on YouTube mindfulness um, mindfulness based stress reduction. Okay, it's called MBSR mindfulness based stress reduction. It's a modifi- modification of Marzi Sarah's uh, meditation teaching to fit. Um, into the American mind, the American society. We have to recognize this is a new, um, a new culture for Buddhism, and Buddhism has to be there. Mm. So, have I answered your question? Yeah. In some way. Mm. Yeah, because um, I obviously as a teenager, you experience a lot of stress academically, also from like, pressures from family. So, um, everyone handles that stress in many different ways. Mm. And for me specifically, I like to keep it all inside of me. I don't want to get to the point where I just can't. Hold it anymore, it just comes out. And it's hard on not just me, but my mom and my dad and my sister. And I can't I don't want to do that to them. But. Yeah, you see, the first thing is um, the way we look at stress. Our attitude towards stress. Um, I like to mention two extremes in coping with stress. One is to justify the stress. The other is to suppress it. Both are extreme. You cannot solve your stress. It's your stress uh, this way. So, mm, this is a kind of like um, child Darwin's expression in uh, evolutionary theory. Fight or fly. You go into either fight or you mode or flight mode. When you keep it to yourself, you are in flight mode. And when it's too much, you reach your limit in suppressing it because you're using so much energy suppressing it. So what happens then? Okay, you, you explode. What we do is uh, we recognize stress on a daily basis. We are trying to find stress signaling, as I mentioned earlier. Signaling is that okay, maybe you become irritated easily, so irritation is a stress signal. Straight away, you embrace this irritation. Okay, this is irritation. This is irritation. When I say this is means okay, you are looking at stress as a third person. What's your name? Celine. Okay, you are not look at you are you are not identifying stress with C. Okay, what you are doing is that okay, as as if I mean, you create some space between you and stress. You use a third person to this is stress. You become expected. You become expected, and that's what we're trying to do in meditation. So that we can look at stress objectively. Mm. 
we can try some, maybe we can try a few minutes of uh, this uh, stress management, this emotion management, self meditation. Okay, you can do this. Um, okay, this evening I have two of you as my focus, and I hope the rest will fit in. <laughs> okay, because uh, they have they have heard me uh, in a few places already during this trip. Okay, I haven't seen you. Mm, your dad has uh, has heard me yesterday, and some other people they have heard, they have listened to me also. Um, so you can I can have your question uh, question from Ed. You know, I can have more questions from anyone later. But now I like to introduce you to um, simple uh, meditation. Simple meditation. <coughs> I think I can find something here. Uh, this is more of American meditation. This is from Harvard University Business Review um, about summarizing, reviewing the the uh, findings from different research projects on mindfulness. And this one, this fourth chapter, is the review of um, a project called Resilience for the Rest of Us. Resilience. Your brain, your body, your mind needs resilience. This is my uh, New York, uh, New York Times uh, columnist. Okay, it's Harvard um, graduate Daniel Goldman, the author of Emotional Intelligence. As just a little bit about it. In the mid or in the early 1970s, he and his friend, uh, all the he, uh, as PhD student from Harvard, they went to India in search of meditation teaching. First, they did uh, Hindu meditation, and then they went to Bodh Gaya. They did uh, two meditation retreat with uh, a disciple of Aja, um, of um, Mahasi called Munindra Ji. Two ten days retreat at the Burmese temple. After that, Goenga uh, Ji, that's a uh, Burmese Indian. Who be, uh, as a business person who became a very good and worldwide meditation teacher. Worldwide uh, meditation teacher. So he went to Bodh Gaya, that's where the Buddha became enlightened. In he conducted uh, five more meditation courses, ten days each. So these two, they joined. So seven days of meditation retreat. And they came back to Harvard, they told their professor, we want to write our PhD thesis on meditation. This is going to change Western psychology. And their professor told them, don't even try. This is a career ending proposal. So they didn't get a chance to do this. But in the end, they got their PhD from Harvard in psychology, and when they become an authority in their own field, they 
started um, experimenting on Buddhist meditation. They have been meditation. They have been meditating for more than four decades, for more than forty years. So this is by one of them, Dr. Daniel Kogan. I know you're tired, maybe you can help me. Can you read this? I read this aloud from from this and maybe not from To tackle this in the workplace, David Sin teamed with the CEO of a high-pressure 24-7 biotech startup. The circuitry that brings us back to full energy and focus after an amygdala hijack concentrates in the left side of our prefrontal area says Richard Davidson, a neuroscientist at the University of Wisconsin. He's also found that when we're distressed, there's heightened activity on the right side of the prefrontal area. Each of us has a characteristic level of left to right activity that predicts our daily mood range. range. If we're tilted to the right, more upsets, if to the left, we're quicker to recover from distress of all kinds. To tackle this in the workplace, Davidson teamed with the CEO of a high-pressure 24-7 biotech startup and meditation expert John Kabat-Zinn of the University, the University of Massachusetts Medical School. Kabat-Zinn offered the employees at the biotech instruction and mindfulness and attention training method that teaches the brain to register anything happening in the present moment with full focus but without reacting. The introductions are simple. To register everything okay, that comes to the brain without reacting. This is the keyword. To register everything without reacting. In Burmese, the narrow, you would tell it. Yeah. That's the one. The instructions are simple. Find a quiet, private place where you can be undistracted for a few minutes. For instance, close your office door and mute your phone. Number two, sit comfortably with your back straight, but relax. Focus your awareness on your breath, staying attentive to the sensations of the inhalation and exhalation. And start again on the next breath. Number four, do not judge your breathing or try to change it in any way. Number five, see anything else that comes to mind as a distraction. Thoughts, sounds, whatever. Let them go and return your attention to your breath. After eight weeks and an average of 30 minutes a day practicing mindfulness, the employees had shifted their ratio from tilted toward the stressed out right side to leaning toward the resilient left side. What's more, they said that they remembered what they loved about their work. They got in touch with what had brought them energy in the first place. Um. I want you to get a copy of this. And the instruction is number number one to number five. Um, it's very simple. You can do this as, as a kind of a DIY to it yourself meditation. Okay. So we are going to do this now. Mm. Number one and number two are very simple just to uh, just about your posture, just sit comfortably and relax. Okay. 
brothers. Um, you don't have to sit this way, you can sit like, like auntie. Like Make us uncomfortable. Right? You can have, can have a ocean. Um, number three, just focus your breath on your, uh, focus your awareness on your breath. Um, one good thing is that, okay, it doesn't mind you can focus on your breath, but if you focus on your tummy movement, the rising of your tummy, usually we um, accumulate and store stress here. You're going to find tension. So if you do this exercise, pay attention to the tummy movement, rising, falling. As you breathe in, you focus on, you label it, okay, rising. As you breathe out, you focus falling because your tummy is falling, like that. And just for you, Today, uh, I know you're tired. This is for people who are tired. When you breathe in, you just count three. One, two, three. Okay? When you breathe out, count four. One, two, three, four. If you're not very tired, you can have a higher number. But this is just a lower number. Okay? This. And then. What you have to do before you breathe in is that you have to tell yourself physically you are exhausted. You are also very stressed out. And what you have to do is you have to be compassionate towards your body, this exhausted body. Don't fight with this time. Don't fight with the stress. Just make sure this is time and feel compassion for this body. Breathe in, supply. So Oxygen for this tired body. Breathe out. Breathe. You can see, you know, um, you're going to discover all your muscles are tense because of the exam. Because of the exam. Now, it's, 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 it's a question of comforting yourself, comforting your subconscious mind, reassuring yourself. It's okay. okay. So, with compassion, breathe in. Count one, two, three. Okay. With um, your attention on your tummy and breathe out. Count one, two, four. In the meantime, if your mind goes to your exam, your study, which it will. And just read it, okay, this is automatic thought, this is auto thought, this is automatic thought. It's okay, it's okay. And then return to your attention to the tummy movement, rising and falling, rising. find your attention goes to um, what you have to do again and again because of the anxiety. It's okay, you just have to recognize, okay, this is anxiety. anxiety. If you see your boobs, just just um, acknowledge, see, see, see. Okay. If you are thinking, just also thinking, thinking. If you are calculating, just calculating, calculating, calculating. If you are <coughs> um, thinking, just reduce your thinking, thinking. This is thinking, this is thinking, and then return to the breath. Slow and gentle breathing. Slow and gentle breathing. Count three. Okay, count the out breath, one, two, three. No, sorry, in breath, one, two, three, in out breath, one, two, four. We start now for six minutes.
see um, these uh, researchers they actually um, look into this into this automatic thought. Okay. If you don't interfere with your thought, if you just acknowledge it mindfully, acknowledge its presence, and not trying to chase it away, not trying trying to suppress it, not trying to uh, modify your thought you know, by adding more ideas and thought. If you are not interfering with your thought, your thought will only last. That's all. How many your, your thought? One thought will last. After that, it will be replaced by another thought. Another thought. The reason a thought okay, lingers on is because we interfere with it. We are not observing as a spectator. We become active. See? What about you? I have an asset name. Nicole. Nicole. Pieces of stress management. Uh, it comes from mindfulness, matter, what mindfulness does is to acknowledge it. If you fight with that meaning, you are interfering with it. And if you are suppressing it, you want to chase the way you are interfering with it. We call that personalization. And what you do is okay, you just alter the flow of your thought as it is. As if it's not your thought, you just answer me. It's a yeah, question. Oh, not your question. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
if you're trying your best and your intention is sad. Um, if you don't mind using Buddhist words to reduce or to solve problems for your side and for others. Meaning, you ma- you're making this decision because you want to solve problem for your side for others. You would say that you have pure intention. With that, if the decision happened to be wrong, you should regret. If a surgeon okay, uses a scalpel operating on a patient with the intention to save his life, it turns out that the operation is not successful. This surgeon has no regret. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have no regret because his intention was to save him. You can, in terms of manifestation, you can compare this doctor using a knife, a kind of knife, okay, and uh, that culminates in someone losing his life. What about a gang against a gangster, okay, using a knife and killing someone on the street? Both use in both incidents, people lose their life. The difference is intention. The man on the street, he intends to kill. Can't kill. But this one, he intends to save. That's the difference. In Burmese, we call Sijina. Sijina Tansi. Sijina Tansi. We cannot be sure, okay, now I'm going to grow some fruit. I cannot be totally sure that my fruits are going to be the <laughs> best. But at the time of growing this seed, if I have good intention, I'm going to make sure that this is the place where I get some, some, some sunshine, some oxygen. Some nice soil, some water. I can only do this much. The rest, I have to leave it. I have to leave the law cause and effect to take care of itself. People are anxious, okay, in your age, okay, to, to what to say that you need, which line to go, that sort of so people worry time. And if that's not worry, this comes with uh, with more than life because we have so many choices. We have so many choices. Even okay, well, you want to be a doctor but you end up being an engineer and being a pilot. This is not the end of the world. Thank you.